Welcome back, this is Professor Edge, and today's lesson is on section 1.2, Functions and Graphs. So we'll start off with the definition of a function. A function is a correspondence between a first set, called the domain, and a second set, called the range. Such that each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range. Let me read that again. So a function is a correspondence between the first set called the domain. So that's the key word. Domain is the first set the X's, and the second set called the range. Now here's what the, the function is, this, this next part. So we're just defining domains, the first set, range, second set. Um, you're matching things up between the first and second set, and to be a function, each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one, that's key right there, exactly one member of the range. All right, so we can, uh, represent functions or correspondence a lot of ways. We can do it with an arrow diagram. So if this is my domain, this is my range, four, five. So the question is, does this represent a range? Uh, does this represent a function? And the answer is yes, this is a function. Because, if you notice, each element in the domain, one gets one, one assignment. One gets paired with four. Two gets one assignment, gets paired with five. Three gets one assignment, it gets assigned to five also. So we don't care that in the range, uh, five got assigned to two numbers. We care about what's going on in the domain. Each member of the domain, one, two, three, each one of those got one, exactly one member assigned to it in the range, okay? So again, we don't care what's going on in the range. We just care that in the domain, each element gets assigned to something in the range. Okay, is this a... So the question for uh, that one was, is the following a function? So again, for A, uh, the answer is yes, it's a function. Let's do another one. So if I had 3, 7, 8, 1, 4, 2, 3 gets assigned to 1, 7 gets assigned to 4, and 7 gets assigned to 2 and 8 gets assigned to 2. And so in this one, we would say, no, it's not a function. And it's not because 2 got uh, two things assigned to it, because again, we don't care about what's going on in the range. All we care about is the domain. In the domain, the element 7 is getting assigned to two numbers in the range. It's getting assigned to 4 and 2. So then that's no, it's not a function. Okay, so another way we can represent a function is a set of ordered pairs. And just to kind of remind you here, domain is the set of the first elements, it's the x's. So the domain is um, 1, 4, 8, 9. So that's the first number in each of the ordered pairs, 1, 4, 8, 9. Okay, and then the range would be the set of the second elements. The y coordinates, 3, 7, 12, 10. And then what we're looking for is that each member of the domain, 1 got assigned to just one number in the range, 4 once, 8 once, 9 once. So each member of the domain got assigned exactly one member of the range. So yes, that's a function.
Okay, let's try another one. Okay, so the domain would be the axis, so 1, 3, negative 8, and 6. You don't have to write repeats. Range is 4, 9, 12, 5, and negative 2. Now I should have put those in order. Um, it's not super important, but it makes it nicer. But I already wrote it, so too late. Now, what we're looking for, see, 1 gets assigned to just 4. But if you notice 3, 3 gets assigned to 9, and at the same time to 5. So that automatically throws it out being a function, because there's one element in the domain, 3 particularly, and it got assigned two y values, two range elements. So no, it's not a function. All right, one more. So generating class, I get most people with this one. Um, so is this one a function? And again, uh, the, let's start with the identifying the domain. So the domain is negative 4, negative 2, 3, and 4. And again, we don't write any repeats. And the range is, let's see, let's put this one in order, 5. 7, 8, and 10. And if you notice, um, so what we're looking for is, is one x value that gets more than one y value, and then it's no good. So let's see, 4 gets just, negative 4 gets 8, negative 2 gets 5, but then I see a negative 2 twice. So a lot of people say, no, it's not a function because you got negative 2 twice, but see, both times negative 2 was paired with the same number, so it's just a repeat. You just can't, you ignore the repeat. Um, negative 2 is getting assigned just one distinct y value. We just listed it twice. It's no big deal. So it's still a function. So yes, it's a function. All right, so function notation. Most You're probably familiar with this, but um, let me make a big deal about it because um, f of x, so that's red f of x, or you could say f at x. So sometimes that in context that f at x makes a little more sense. But f of x or f at x, and um, what it means, it's the y value so f of x is the y value or the uh, output value of the function f is the name of the function function the y value of the function f of uh, given the x value for a given x value So f of x, remember, that's the y value. Well, we just say equals. So if I ask you, hey, what's f of x? And you remember, it's a y value. The long-winded version, it's the y value of the function, whatever the name of the function. In this case, it's f for the given x value. Okay. So an example, we can define a function, a relationship between x and y. So again, this is f of x is the y coordinate, and see y equals, you're going to take, say, 3 times your x value and add 5 to it. So if I want you to find or evaluate f of 1, then you just take the x out, put a 1 in, and then do the math. So that's 3 plus 5, which is 8. So f of 1 is 8. So note. So I'm going to note 
the ordered pair that goes with this. Remember, x is the 1, and f of x is the y value, which is equal to 8. So this is f of x, or in this case it's f of 1, is equal to 8. Right? x is 1, f of x is 8, or f of 1 is 8. Okay, let's try f of 3. So you just put in the 3. So you get 9 plus 5, which is 14. And you can you can actually put in another expression in there. You know, it doesn't have to be a number. I can put in f of uh, a plus h. So you're going to go 3a plus h plus 5. And just do your algebra to simplify it. So distribute the 3. So we're going to distribute the 3. And 5. And you can't simplify any further, so that's your answer. Okay? Okay, so that's function notation. Hopefully you're pretty familiar with that. But again, remember, it's a y value. It's the output value of the, fun of the function f. Okay, a third way that we can represent functions is uh, by graphs. Since we can represent a function as a set of ordered pairs, we know we can graph ordered pairs, you know, x and y coordinate. So if I ask you to graph, say, f of x equals x squared minus 2, then you know, hopefully you remember that's a parabola, but if not, then how do you do it? You go back to your basics. Remember, f of x is your y. Same thing. All right. So you plug in 0. 0 squared minus 2 is negative 2. Plug in 1. 1 squared is 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 2 squared 4 minus 2 is 2. And then negative 1 squared will give me the same answer was, is 1, but so that's negative 1 and negative 2, because this one's symmetric about the uh, y-axis. So that's going to be 2. And then when I graph it, just plot the points that we just figured out. So we got 0, negative 2, so this y, which is the f of x. Um, so 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 1, uh, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then uh, negative 2, 2. And then we make a parabola. So this provided we remember it's a parabola and it's basically just moved down two units because of the minus two. Okay, so that's our graph. Now, um, how can we just looking at the graph tell if it's a function or not a function? So if you remember, that's the vertical line test. So if it's possible for any one vertical line to cross a graph, more than once, so that's the key there. If it hits the graph more than once, then it is not a function. Okay? So for it to be a function, that means every possible, every vertical line would hit the graph only once. All right, so let's look at this example. Okay. So is the following a function. So A. So if I have a graph that looks something like say that. And the answer is yes, it's a function because you gotta imagine here's a vertical line and now I want to remind you a vertical line is x equals whatever number it's going through on the x-axis, right? This might be x equals negative 2. 
So this vertical line represents one x value and it's assigned whatever the y value is at that point. Okay, here's another vertical line, x equals negative one. And it's the graph once. And so you gotta imagine sweeping across each vertical line hits the graph only once. So then yes, it is a function. Okay, let's try another one. So if I had a circle, and then obviously that's not a function because here's the vertical line. And it hits one, two times on the graph. And that would mean that that one x value has two y values, which means it's not a function. All right, so that's the vertical line test. Okay, so let's determine the domain and range of the function just looking at the graph. And so what we're doing is you've got to remember that um, the domain is the set of x values. So what I, if I can kind of like, there's a couple ways I can do this. I um, wish I had it on video where you can actually see it. But here, I'll try my best. Um, so if I can kind of draw a box or two vertical lines that contain all the x values, right? The domain, the domain are all the x values, x values in between those two vertical lines is the domain. Okay, so the domain would go from negative three, we're going to put a bracket, and it includes all the numbers up to four, not including four because of the open circle there. Okay, so that's the domain. Now the range is a set of y values, and so basically if we can kind of trap all the values again in between these horizontal lines, so that's y equals negative two there, and then this part here this part is the um, range, all the y values. Okay, so in between here. Okay, so what is that? So that's from uh, negative 2 and again the negative 2 is closed circle, so that would be a bracket to positive 1 and the, it's an open circle, so it's a bracket. All right, let's try another one. All right, let's look at number two here. And you see the domain, again, is going to be... Now, be careful about, you know, I'm trapping it in between these um, vertical lines, and it's all the numbers in between because it's a continuous curve, because basically that means continuous is a fancy way of saying that, right, there's no breaks. Um, I can draw it without picking up my pen. So that's a continuous curve, so you know, it would be appropriate to draw the box and say, okay, what's in between? So the next example, I'm going to show you one where you shouldn't do that. All right, and we'll talk that, about that in a second. But the domain is, oh, and I said there's another way. The other way I think of it, too, is if, again, this is where I wish you could see um, video, is if you can imagine taking like a, a trash compactor and squishing this down onto the x-axis from above and from below and smashing it onto the x-axis what x values does it hit and you'll see that it'll hit all these see that's a, that's another way that i like to think of it so if you can kind of imagine me um, had like put this in a trash compactor with something above it and below it and pushing it together onto the x-axis, where would the splat be? That's kind of what another way to think of it. So you can see that's going to be from negative 4. Negative 4. Oops. That would be a, not a print, it would be a bracket. I mean, it would be negative 4 to 3. And then the range, again, the same thing. So you can, since it's a continuous line, we can we can uh, draw draw a line, a you know, we want to box this in between negative 2 and positive 2. And that one gets people because it's not necessarily the end points, right? It's the highest point. So it's from negative 2 
to 2. And it's back it because it hits 2. All right, right here it hits 2. All right, and then again, if I view it the other way, if I were to do my trash compactor and uh, push it in from the sides, where would the splat be? And you can see that the splat would be right through here from negative 2 to 2. All right, and remember, when we write, write this in integral notation, it's from the smallest number to the largest. So negative 2 to 2. All right, now I want to show you an example where you've got to be careful. Okay, so the domain... Now, if you were to draw the vertical lines for domain like this and say it's trapped between here and here from negative 2 to 3, then that answer would be wrong. So if you wrote negative 2 to 3, that would be wrong. So the domain would be... And the reason it's wrong is because you're saying that it's all the numbers between negative 2 and 3 if you write it with the brackets like that including negative 2 and 3. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 distinct points. So it's like a set of ordered pairs with those 6 points on it. So what's the x-coordinate of this first point here? Well, it's negative 2, so I've got to use the brace to say the set of these distinct elements. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. See, that's completely different than uh, what I crossed out. Negative 2 to 3, that's all, that's an infinite number of points. It's all the points on the x-axis between negative 2 and 3, including the endpoints. This one with the bases is saying where it's six distinct numbers. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? So what do you think the range would be? And hopefully you're saying negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, with braces. All right, and let's do one more. It's kind of a combination of B and C. Okay, so on this one, again, um, the domain... If you think of it as the trash compactor situation that I was telling you about, and if I were to push everything down to the x-axis from above and below, or push it down and push it up, you know, compact it, um, you would see that you would hit, you would hit basically from the th negative three all the way to the three. Okay, so your domain would be, and everything gets hit in between, right? It's not, any, it's not distinct points. It's everything between negative 3 and 3, but 3 is an open circle, so that has to be a pencil. And then the range, again, if I think of the trash compactor, and I push it onto the x-axis, I mean to the y-axis for range, it's just going to be these distinct points, negative 1, 1, 2, and 4. So I have to use the braces. Negative 1, 1, 2, and 4. Okay? So that's getting the domain and range. So now if you're just given a function rule, an algebra equation, um, or an equation defining a function, basically the domain, we start out, domain is is all real numbers because basically if you can put in a number for x and plug it in you get a you get a you'll get a y value so if i put in one three times one squared plus five times one plus one will give me a number now it doesn't matter what i put in i'm going to get a number out for my y value so the domain is all real numbers or you can write it in interval notation negative infinity infinity okay um, so what we're looking for is anything that doesn't produce a value when you put in a number. So let's say, for instance, 5 over x plus 2. Now note, if, if I asked you to find f of negative 2, what would happen? 
If you put in negative 2 for x, what's 2 plus 2? Or negative 2 plus 2? 0. And what's 5 divided by 0? Well, that doesn't give you a number. That's undefined. So negative 2 doesn't get an assignment, doesn't get a partner, doesn't get matched with anything. So to be a function, everything domain has to get matched with something. So this wouldn't be a function unless you exclude neg negative 2 from the domain. So that's what we're going to do. So we want it to be a function. So to be a function, we have to say, the domain has to exclude negative 2 because negative 2 would make make uh, the function make that value undefined and be undefined at negative 2 okay the function's undefined there so the domain's going to be from negative infinity to negative 2 parenthesis union negative 2 to infinity so that way we got to exclude the things that make fractions undefined. So that, so basically you take the denominator, set it equal to zero, solve it, and then throw those things out of the domain. So if I had f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x squared um, minus 5x plus 6, so we're going to take the denominator set it equal to 0, find factors of 6 to add to 5, plus 3 and 2, minus, minus, so x minus 3 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 3, or 2. Now we're going to exclude those from the domain, so the domain is going to be negative infinity, to 2, union 2 to 3, union 3 to infinity. Okay? So you got to throw out anything that makes it undefined. So what you're looking for is if you have a rational expression, a fraction, that's a fancy way of saying fraction, uh, set the denominator equal to 0, anything that makes the, de the denominator equal to 0, you have to exclude it. And then the other thing you look for is square roots. Now for this to be defined, the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. So all you do is say, well, x minus three has to be greater than or equal to zero. And you solve it. So x is greater than or equal to three. That's the domain. So that's gonna be from three infinity. Okay, so as simple as that. Okay, so that concludes the lesson for 1.2. Uh, go to my, my math lab, complete your exercise there, and I'll see you next time.